Now I want to move on to some more detailed sizing. So we're still at the early conceptual design phase, but now maybe we want to get into a bit more detail. So this is from Raymer sections uh, 6.2 to 6.4. Maybe 6.5. So the previous approach, one of the big limitations that I just mentioned, was it doesn't allow for a sudden weight change due to a payload drop. Whereas for a mission with a sudden weight change, we really want to write W naught equals W crew plus W fixed payload, the part that isn't getting dropped, plus W dropped payload. plus the fuel weight, plus the empty weight fraction, times the weight. Now, getting the fuel weight now requires a different calculation procedure, and I'm not going to go into the details of this. You can look in the excerpt from Raymer to uh, see exactly how that works. But after we've calculated the total takeoff weight, we now need to size the fuselage, the wings, and the tail of the aircraft. So let's start with the fuselage. So often this is dictated by real world constraints. So for a passenger aircraft, for example, the number of passengers and therefore the number of seats acro um, across the plane So how wide basically the fuselage is essentially sets the length and diameter. But there's some empirical data that can be used to estimate the fuselage length based on the takeoff weight. And there's a table, table 6.3 in Raymer, which is included in the PDF version of these notes. Um, and this gives a fuselage length um, as a function of a coefficient times the takeoff weight to some power. And this is just a correlation. Um, and you can get an idea of looking at these in the notes. Um, and we'll, again, we'll discuss these maybe in more detail in class. There's another factor that defines the fuselage, which is the fineness ratio. Basically gives an idea of how slender the fuselage is. So this is the fuselage length. Over its maximum diameter. And if the fuselage cross section isn't circular, uh, we use an equivalent diameter. Typically, that would be a, the hydraulic diameter uh, that you've learned about in fluid dynamics. And it's possible to theoretically show that for a fixed contained volume, the subsonic drag is minimized for a fineness ratio of 3. And for supersonic, it's minimized for about a value of 14. And it turns out that in reality, again, due to these practical considerations, most real aircraft fuselages fall somewhere between these two values. 
In all cases, it's really the real world constraints that tend to actually dictate the fuselage size. Basically, we're talking about fitting in the payload is what sets the length and the diameter.